quickly. My hand seized the magazine from the table next to the sofa to be used as a shield for my fortress. The plan was to seem distracted with this magazine and not as though I was anticipating someone's arrival. My brain was so caught up in how brilliant this plan was, my senses barely noticed when another blonde girl strolled by, chattering happily with two of her friends. My eyes had to do a double take before taking the sight of a thin blonde girl of 14 with shining blue eyes and pink bubblegum glistening lips. Kristen Bernadette. At the sight of Kristen, my brain was now beginning to realize that the plan, which it had so brilliantly set in motion, had worked a little too well. So well, in fact, that my eyes chose this very moment to alert my brain that the magazine in my hands was upside down. By the time I am getting ready for my first attack, my mind is already pelting me with a series of excuses pertaining to why it was a bad idea to try and interact with Kristen. She's not ready for you yet. You don't really know her that well. If you approach her now, you'll look stupid. One after the other, the excuses came nonstop, pelting me like grenades, landing in my brain and exploding on contact in white-hot bursts, which left my brain stunned in daze. I waited until Kristen disappeared into a room with her friends before wrenching my body off the sofa to make for one of the safest places in the area. My now shaking legs carried me towards a small corridor off the lobby. Once inside the corridor, I pushed my way through a door leading to the more coolly lit men's restroom. Leaning against one of the white marble sinks along the wall, I gazed at my visage in the mirror. A thin bespectacled African American boy of 17, wearing a black t-shirt with the number 11 in white on the front of it stared back at me with a look of fear on his face. Trying to regain composure after my mind's first attack, I willed the look of fear on the face of my brave soldier to be replaced by a look of determination. Brow furrowed and teeth gritted tightly, I raised my fists and began thrusting them one after the other at my reflection. Come on, I growled silently. You want a piece of me, Sonny? Come at me, bro. I can take you. Why don't you and I take this outside right now, huh? I will take you all the way. How do you like those apples? After throwing these demoralizing verbal threats at my mind to intimidate it, I thought it best to calm my nerves and get ready to plan another attack. With my fingers, I tugged at the collar of my shirt and took a whiff. A sigh of relief escaped my lips as a spicy scent filled my nostrils. I closed my eyes and took a deep breath. 